Republican Ed Romaine. When you run a government, you've got to be on top of things. And Democrat Dave Colon. Look, th we have an exciting opportunity uh, ahead of us. Both are asking voters to make them the next Suffolk County executive. And both have agreed to take the stage at Newsday Studios to answer your questions and ours in a special Long Island Votes 2023 debate. Welcome to Studio 2 at Newsday's headquarters in Melville and to Newsday TV's Long Island Votes 2023 debate between the two candidates for Suffolk County Executive. I'm Associate Editor Joy Brown, and welcome to Newsday to our two candidates, Republican Brookhaven Town Supervisor Ed Romaine and Democrat David Colon. In this debate, each candidate will get one minute to introduce themselves. And, that one, and then one candidate will get two minutes to answer the question directed at him, and the other will get a minute for rebuttal. At the conclusion, each candidate will get one minute in closing to make their case to Suffolk County voters. They have a view of the time clock here in the studio. Before the candidates came on stage, there was a coin toss and uh, Mr. Romaine won that coin toss and has elected to go second in his opening statement. So we'll start out first with you, Mr. Colon. Thank you. Thank you for moderating, Joy. And first, I want to say my prayers are with the people of Israel. Uh, we stand with them today. Look, I love Suffolk County. It's where I was born and raised. It's where I'm raising my children. I've lived on the North Shore and the South Shore. I've lived in Western Suffolk and more Eastern Suffolk. And my wife and I want to make sure that the Suffolk of the future is a place that our kids and all of our kids um, can have a safe, affordable place to live. I'm ready to bring a fresh set of ideas, experiences, and energy to solve the problems that face us. We've never had a prosecutor be county executive. We've never had a business person be county executive. And I'm both those things. I know how to fight crime. I know how to create good paying jobs. And I know how to hold the line on taxes. And I've held senior leadership positions in Suffolk County government, including as chair of the Planning Commission for Suffolk County, where I was nationally recognized for my role in cutting red tape. My opponent is a 40-year career politician who's raised taxes the last eight years and presides over a town government known as Crookhaven, which Newsday recently uh, revealed has major scandals going on just as we speak. Mr. We need Colon, new leaders, and I look forward to being that leader. Now. Thank you. Mr. Romaine. How are you doing? My name is Ed Romaine. I'm running for Suffolk County Executive. I'm the current supervisor of Brookhaven Town, which is the largest town in Suffolk County, and have done that job for over 11 years, endorsed by Newsday each and every time I've run. And before that, I was a county legislator, endorsed by Newsday every time I've run. And Newsday has called me, in one of their endorsements, the best town executive uh, in Suffolk County. We have a lot of challenges ahead. We have large LIPA bills, thanks to my opponent who served on the LIPA board and raised LIPA rates by more than 40 percent, higher than the national average. We have other challenges that we have to face in the days ahead. Taxes, budgets, but in the town of Brookhaven, I've produced stable budgets and the state controller just issued a report that said the town of Brookhaven has zero fiscal stress and zero Mr. environmental Romain, stress. Thank Look you. forward. Yeah. Newsday TV Sherry Einhorn went all around Suffolk County talking to residents and gathering up questions for you. So let's start off in Bayshore. What would they do about the high crime that we have right now? Uh, especially around the Brentwood area, there's a lot of crime. I would like to know what kind of solutions you're proposing. We start out with uh, Mr. Colon. Sure. Let me start with this. One thing I've learned in running against a 40-year career politician is that they'll say anything to hold on to power. My opponent has ads lying about me and my background and my beliefs. He's photoshopped me with a sign saying I want to welcome criminals to this area. Look, when I graduated, I passed up high-paying jobs to become a federal prosecutor because I wanted to fight crime, and I did. I held criminals accountable across the country and here in Suffolk County. I was a guest instructor at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center and I helped prosecute one of the Al-Qaeda terrorists after 9-11. So let me be really clear. Nothing is more important to me than the safety of your family and mine. Now, when it comes to crime, I'm the only candidate with a law enforcement background up here, and I'm the only candidate who's put together a comprehensive plan on how to keep our community safe. 
you can look at that plan at, at suffolkforward.com. I invite you to do that. But let me start with a couple of things we need to be sure to do. One, as the first prosecutor to be county executive, I want to make sure that we fully fund our law enforcement. We give them the tools, the training, and the, 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 the technology they need to keep our communities safe. We also need to make sure that every school has a school safety plan. As a father of three school-aged children, that's critically important to me, and it's important to all of us. We need to make sure we're tackling the issue of drugs. Opioids, and particularly fentanyl, are real threats to our community. We need to hold the, those who would bring them here accountable and prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. We also have to get guns off our street. We need to make sure that we are reducing, addressing the root causes of crime by investing in communities. And we need to push back against Washington and Albany when they do things that will not keep us safe. Bottom line, if you care about public safety in Suffolk County, trust the prosecutor, not the politician. And with that, we go with you to you, Mr. Romain. Thank you. Crime is a serious issue. We need to make sure that the vacancies that we have in, in county government, such as the 51 detectives that are funded in the budget but not filled, gets filled. We need to go after the criminals. And that is why every law enforcement agency and organization in this county has endorsed my candidacy and not my opponent. They know he's working on, running on the working families line, which supports cashless bail, defunding the police, and clean slate for felons. I don't support that. He obviously took their endorsement, is campaigning on their line. I do not support that. I am looking to have an aggressive stand against the criminals and make sure that the laws that we have in this state get changed so that we can protect the citizens of this county. Let's go to a question from our political team. How would you handle a potential influx of Venezuelan and other migrants who are now eligible to stay in the United States temporarily and to work under new rules adopted by the Biden administration? We'll start out with you, Mr. Romain. Well, I disagree with the Biden's administration open board policies. We have people pouring into our borders. Look, we're a nation of immigrants, but you have to control immigration. We do not have an intelligent immigration policy. What we find is that we have thousands every day pouring into this country. And now we have the southern states sending them up to sanctuary cities like New York City. I listened to the mayor. Mayor Adams has said, the migrant population is breaking the back of the city. He made it clear that they cannot afford to provide these services. I do not wish Suffolk County to be a sanctuary city. But I will take the oath of office if I'm elected, and I will swear to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the United States. I happen to disagree with some of the policies of this administration and will fight to make sure that we are not a sanctuary city. Thank you, Mr. Romaine. Mr. Cologne? Under County Executive Blown's leadership, he's made it very clear that Suffolk County is not a sanctuary county, and I will make it sure that Suffolk County will not be a sanctuary county when I'm County Executive. Uh, while we can empathize with those who are here legally, who are seeking asylum, whether they're from the Ukraine or South America or wherever, uh, the bottom line is the failure is at the federal level with the, the broken policies at our borders, the failure is at the level of the, of the, the our border states who are busing migrants up to New York, and the failure is at New York City level, which is making promises regarding shelter that they can't keep. I told the governor with no uncertain terms that these folks are being treated like political footballs, but Suffolk County is not responsible for the problems. That lies with the federal government, the states, and the, New York City, and we're not going to be part of the solution. We need to focus on helping the folks who are here uh, we have enough, we're stretched thin, quite frankly, with regard to our social services systems and supporting those, including those who are experiencing homelessness right here in Suffolk County. Thank you, Mr. Colon. Let's go out to Copeg. What are we going to do about the current issue regarding the economy? The cost of food, where I'm going now, the, food of, the, the price of gas, the price of owning a home. So for the first time, Suffolk County has the opportunity to elect someone from the business sector to be county executive. And I'm going to tackle the affordability crisis in three ways. One, we're going to make sure we're going to focus on housing. 
we're going to focus on reducing the cost of government, and we're going to focus on, on creating good paying jobs. So when it comes to housing, uh, I also have a, my plan at SuffolkForward.com, but that is personal to me because I have three young kids who we want to be able to have afford to live here. Um, as I go around Suffolk County, more and more people are talking about this, families throughout Suffolk County, businesses throughout Suffolk County, like that gentleman in Copeg. We have a choice here in this election between someone who's actually built housing, been involved in the private sector and the not-for-profit sector, both here on Long Island and elsewhere, in creating housing, and someone who's been a career politician for 40 years while this problem has gotten worse and worse. So here's how I'm going to solve it. Let's go to SuffolkForward.com to, re to read my full plan, but I told the governor that her plan of a top-down Albany approach doesn't make sense. We need to have a local, regional approach. We need to have Suffolk County needs to create a chief housing officer for our region to work with our municipalities, towns, and villages to identify where we already have the infrastructure we need to, uh, to, to put housing in quickly, whether it's the water, roads, wastewater. And that could be downtowns, it could be redeveloping strip malls, it could be repurposing government properties. Uh, we also need to cut down the permitting process. Um, in Brookhaven, you have to hire an expediter to get anything done, uh, get anything through the, the, the town government. I know, I live in Brookhaven, I've had to hire one. We gotta make sure that we don't bring that mentality to Suffolk County. We need to make our processes faster and smoother. We also have to, quite frankly, focus on property taxes because property taxes are a key part of affordability here, and we need to make sure that we're holding the line on taxes. My opponent has raised taxes in, in Brookhaven eight straight times. I'm committed to cutting taxes, property taxes, in Suffolk County. Elect a business leader, let's make government more efficient, let's focus on housing, and let's create good-paying jobs by supporting our small businesses. Mr. Romain. Uh, I just would go back to the last question. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear my opponent criticize President Biden, who he is strongly supporting, by the way. So it's, it's odd that he would criticize someone that he is strongly supporting. Affordability is key. Affordability and safety are the two key issues in this race. As supervisor of this town, we have made an affordable town. We have created jobs. We had over a, a $1 billion of investment in the last 16 months in the town of Brookhaven. We have not looked to work, as my opponent has, for tax shelters for billionaires and millionaires. That's what he does for a living. He runs a firm that does investments that provide tax shelters for people like the governor of Colorado, who is, who is his friend, who paid no income tax a few years ago. He's done a great job making sure that all of us have to pay more. That type of mentality we can't have. Thank you, Mr. Robain. Let's go to the next question from our political team. And it's kind of a follow-up to the yeah. last one. We know the need for affordable housing is massive. Over the past decade, Suffolk has funded a total of 2,082 affordable units. How would you boost that number? We start with you, Mr. Romain. There's a lot of ways to boost that number. One way is what we do in the town of Brookhaven, which I would encourage every municipality to do. If you're a volunteer fireman, if you work for EMT or work for a volunteer community, you can get a 10% reduction of your town taxes. I'd like to see every municipality provide that. In addition to that, the county of Suffolk offers a $30,000 down payment for people that are eligible. That program needs to be expanded and need to be encouraged. Furthermore, the county takes property for back taxes. I would not sell at auction any property in a low to moderate income area. Instead, because we know who would bid on them, instead, I would like to see those properties transferred to housing groups such as Habitat for Humanity and Long Island Housing Partnership to create actual housing opportunities for low to moderate income people. In addition to that, the county can work to create parcels of land that it owns to make available for homesteading. The Homestead Act came into being in 1862, and that said if you actually went in and built something on a piece of property, you could own that property if you lived there for five years. I think having a Homestead Act for Suffolk County, for different areas of the county, where the county could make its land available for people who wanted to own homes or for development for multifamily homes would make a great deal of sense. 
we need to promote affordable housing. We need to keep our young people here, and we need to create opportunities here for people who can afford to live here. Thank you. I would go to you, Mr. Colon. Thank you. Well, look, uh, responding to something that the supervisor said earlier, um, look, if you don't understand how business works, I get it because you've been a creature of government for the last 40 years. But I am involved in starting small businesses. If you don't know the difference between a hedge fund and a small business, you probably shouldn't be county executive. But so when it comes to, when it comes to housing, I proposed a plan. You said SuffolkForward.com. We need to make sure that we're making sure that our young people can't afford to stay here and we have housing throughout people's, people's, people's life. My plan would be to work with the towns and villages to identify places that we already have the infrastructure. We can move quickly on housing if we identify that, as opposed to the way we do it now, which is the developer will come with their land and say, make this the place to do it. Let's identify for them the places that are already ready, ready from a traffic perspective and a, and, and a water perspective. The other thing, I have in my plan the proposal that we use the county property. Um, I'm involved in the private sector projects like in Florida where we're using pro county land around the community college to put housing. We don't need a Homestead Act, we just got to do it. Um, and we also am involved in redeveloping a mall in, in you, San Mr. Diego. Cologne. So there's a lot of uh, things happening other places that we can bring here. Let's head out to Huntington. What would they do about the taxes? They seem to be going up the past couple of years, like no end in sight. Knew that one was coming. Mr. <laughs> Cologne. As I said earlier, we have an opportunity to elect in me the first business leader ever to be county executive. We can look at the Suffolk County budget with a keen eye to look at efficiencies, what we can do to improve our business processes, and how we can hold down the cost of government. When I was chair of the Suffolk County Planning Commission, I won a national award for cutting red tape for here in Suffolk County. Imagine what I can do as county executive. We also have $700 million in reserves here in Suffolk County. I believe we need to give some of that money back to the taxpayers in the form of tax cuts. My opponent has raised taxes eight out of the last eight years in Brookhaven. That's the wrong approach. We need to be holding the line on taxes, and when we can, like we can in Suffolk County right now, we need to be returning some of that money to the taxpayers. I'm also gonna lead by example by cutting my own pay. My opponent has raised his pay six times in the last few years. That's not leadership. Leadership is holding the line and cutting your own pay and leading by example. He's also taken tens of thousands of dollars from the uh, unions, for county worker unions, uh, for this campaign. I'm not doing that, and I won't do that as county executive. I respect and honor our county workforce, but I believe the county executive needs to be independent when you're negotiating contracts with those unions. We need to be there standing up for the taxpayer and only representing the taxpayer, not having worrying about where our campaign contributions are coming from them. That is a key difference between us. So look, if you want to have a better, more efficient government, if you want to have a leadership that's going to not only keep our government in check in terms of its growth, but also grow our economy to create economic activity by supporting small business, like I've done here in Suffolk County in the private sector, and I headed up for Suffolk County, our small business recovery efforts during COVID-19, so I know exactly what our small businesses need, I know exactly what the county does, and I know how the county can do more. For instance, by creating a small business success center, by making it free to start a small business in Suffolk County, if we have more economic activity, that lowers the overall burden on each individual from a tax perspective. Thank you. Taxes. Taxes. Well, I got to tell you, if I'm looking to deal with someone, I'm looking for someone with experience. I know he's criticizing my experience. He has none in elective office. He has none running a government. He has none guiding a town or putting together coalitions. I have the experience. We need a more affordable county. Taxes have got out of hand. The first taxes that I would reduce is the energy tax. We tax your electric bill because of the high rates that he charged when he was on LIFA that he voted for repeatedly. We need to leave the tax on electric, on gas, on home heating fuel, and on propane. Very few counties tax that, but we do here. And that only adds to the burden that my opponent has added by giving us a LIPA bill that's 40% higher when he served as a trustee on LIPA. Thank you, Mr. Bruner. Thank you. Let's go back to our political team question. Um, a substantial part of Long Islanders' property taxes, tax bills, goes to pay for law enforcement. Overtime pay is a driver of county expenses. 
what could you do in future contract negotiations to curb overtime? We start with you, Mr. Romain. The thing that you could do to curb overtime is negotiate with the unions and fill positions. In my town, when I put a budget together and I put a position in the budget, those positions get filled. If they become vacant, we fill them. That is not true in the county of Suffolk. They don't have an honest budget. They have a dishonest budget. You talk to any department, including the police department, and you will find that we are paying taxes for positions that regularly are not filled. I mentioned the detectives, which do the major investigations. 51 of those positions, although we're being taxed for, remain vacant. If you fill these positions, you will not need to rely on overtime. Overtime is when you need staffing that you have budget for but haven't filled. So I would fill those positions. I would also negotiate with the unions in terms of what can be done to reduce overtime in managing staff, in using things such as a swing shift, using things such as different times for people to show up and staffing to the needs of what we can see as the problem out there. He mentioned unions. This guy went after every one of them, every one of them. And he didn't say any of the things he said today on the stand. Mm -hmm. He's telling us a different story today because he asked for their support. They listened to him. They listened to his notes that he has here. And then they listened to me, who have been there for many years at different levels of government and understood immediately the difference. And that's why all the municipal unions in this county have endorsed me, because they want someone to lead this county, not someone talking off notes. Not thank someone, you, Mr. Roman. Thank you. Mr. Colon. Thank you. A couple, let me clear up a couple of misconceptions here. First of all, not every municipal uh, employee union has supported my opponent. In fact, the people who work for him in the town of Brookhaven, the union that represents them, has endorsed me, because they know best what leadership he's shown in Brookhaven and how we can do better. Second of all, I honor our county workers and I honor the unions. I've said I won't take their money because that is what can change how you face a negotiation. I believe they do a great job, our, our municipal workers, our law enforcement workers, and I look forward to working with them because they are the heart and soul of Suffolk County. That's how we get things done in Suffolk County. Let me say one thing about LIPA, which my opponent doesn't seem to like cherry picking the facts. During the time that I was on the LIPA Board of Trustees, the volunteer position over a decade ago, rates came down from the time I started to the time I finished. But what we really need to do is focus on how we get government costs down. And the way to get government costs down is to avoid overtime by making sure we have good management, smart management. Let's bring in someone from the private sector who can look at government and understand what's going wrong. Thank I've you, overseen Mr. law enforcement Cologne. officers as an early part of my career, and I look forward to doing Let's it again. Let's go to Lindenhurst. What, what are you going to do about us people down there in Lindenhurst area about South of, Montauk. South of Montauk's fixing down there with the water problems in the sewers? Mr. Colon. So water is a critical issue for our, our county and our region. Uh, as someone who used to live in the, in the town of Babylon, I know well exactly what she's talking about. Um, Lindenhurst and all of our communities, uh, particularly those close to the water, uh, need to have the sewers we need to protect our water. The water that we drink is underneath our feet. The water that drives our economy, surrounds us. There's nothing more important to our families, to our economy, to our way of life here in Suffolk County uh, than our water. And I've been a leader on water quality for over a decade. So when I chaired the Planning Commission, County Executive Ballone and I launched the Reclaim Our Waters initiative, which started moving us towards focusing on, on, on water quality as the number one issue affecting our region. I headed up for Suffolk County the Sewer Financing Task Force. I then headed up for the county the initiative to help draft the proposal that was supposed to be on the ballot this November um, that we worked on a bipartisan fashion to put on the ballot this November uh, that would have created a water quality district for our whole county, would have provided the opportunity for us to get millions and millions of dollars of matching funds from the state and the federal government. The Republican County Legislature in Suffolk County said no. They rejected the opportunity to put this on the ballot. And my opponent said he was for the proposal, but he did literally nothing to convince 
the Republicans to put this on the ballot because not one of them voted as he said they should have. So that's not leadership. You can't be pro-environment if you're not being a real leader on water quality. You can't be pro-environment if you're letting New York City take its trash and dump it in Suffolk County. You can't be pro-environment when you're listening to your campaign donors and when they say, ask you to sweep under the rug an allegation that there's toxic ash going into your landfill and hurting the communities around you, and you look the other way, as Newsday has reported. I will, in the first week of my administration, put that water quality ballot initiative on the ballot with the help of a pro-water legislature. Thank you, Mr. Colon. Mr. Romain. In 1986, I, wrote, I wrote the first Clean Water Act for this county and have been an advocate for clean water and for sewers and supported the initiative, even though I thought it was an imperfect initiative this year to go on the ballot. I believe in sewers. I think IA systems are important, but I think our densely populated areas of the county demand sewers now and would have a more beneficial effect on pollution of our waterways by installing sewers in downtown areas like Sable and Smithtown and Kings Park and all a whole host of other communities. My opponent, I, you know, I, I'm just amazed that he makes charges and does things like this. This should be a nonpartisan issue. But when you hear him talk, highly critical of the Republican legislature. If he ever gets elected, you, I don't Romain. know how he's going to get anything done. Let's go to a question from our staff. It's been about a year since Suffolk sustained one of the nation's longest and most costly ransomware attacks. And still not all services have been restored. What is your plan to prevent future cyber attacks? I think we start with you, Mr. Romain. Yes, you do. Thank you. Uh, this is where experience counts. In inexperience, you, you're wondering what's happening. In the town of Brookhaven, we have cybersecurity insurance. The county doesn't. In the town of Brookhaven, our data center is in the cloud. The county's isn't. In the town of Brookhaven, we have done periodic penetration tests to shut our back doors and make sure we're secure. As county executive, we are going to address, and this is 13 months after the hack, where our county executive is still running this county by emergency orders. We are going to make sure we have cybersecurity insurance, and the reason we were rejected, we will cure. We will bring in the best staff that we possibly can, because obviously what was ever happening is not up to the job. We need a system where IT takes precedence as we have given it in the town of Brookhaven. My experience in delivering that in the town of Brookhaven is second to none. I've worked in IT. I've made sure that our town is secure. I make sure that we weren't hacked as the county was. I'm, I'll check the time. So all I will say is we will have a different day one because of the experience I've had in the town of Brookhaven running the largest town being elected five times by large margins. So you may say experience doesn't count. When you deal with a hack like this or you deal with any emergency, if you don't have the experience, you will not have the ability to get something done. If you're second guessing, if you're relying on notes, if you're looking to make partisan points, that isn't the way you run a government. You run a government by bringing the best people in and by providing the leadership that is so needed. Thank you, Mr. Romain. Mr. Colon? We have a chance to elect a county executive and me as the first person ever from the technology sector to be county executive. That's real experience. I have, uh, I'm a co-inventor on 19 patents related to internet technology. I've kept the organizations that I've run safe from cybersecurity, including some involving with significant healthcare data. Suffolk County needs to have a leader who, yes, understands technology, um, and I do. We need to make sure that we have a unified IT system. We need to architect our, our, our cybersecurity system in a way that we have, uh, we can get insurance coverage. Insurance coverage is important, of course, not only because it helps you 
pay for things on the back end, but most importantly, the insurance companies don't want you to have to pay, so they will do training for the staff to avoid phishing emails and Trojan horse viruses and all those kinds of things. But my opponent makes a point about his experience. The town of Brookhaven was hacked by the terrorist group ISIS several years ago, and they took over his website, so I don't know what he's talking about. The other thing is that the county clerk's Thank office you, is Mr. where... Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's head on over to North Bellport. My question is, will you commit to closing the landfill and coming up with a clean energy plan for the citizens and residents of North Bellport? And we start with you, Mr. Colon. Yeah, absolutely. The town of Brookhaven was told like a decade ago that it needed to get the landfill in shape. In fact, in his first inaugural address, my, 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 my opponent said that he's going to deal with the landfill, most important issue facing the county. Here we are a dozen years later, and it still isn't fixed. It's still uh, poisoning people. We just recently, they found that there's actually chemicals in the water in the surrounding communities. And I don't believe there's a more egregious violation of oath of duty than to side with your, with your donors your, that are creating ash and trucking it to the landfill. And they, there's a whistleblower who says that ash may be toxic and it's affecting the area around that landfill. An area, by the way, that has asked for years for people to pay attention and help them out with this. That, that landfill may have toxic ash, and he wrote a letter written by the ash company to ask for the case to be, dis, to, to be dismissed. That is an, a, a violation. That's why there's a call for investigations, criminal investigations, um, and civil investigations into this. Um, and I believe that is a huge problem. That is not leadership. That is, you've passed the buck for a decade, and now you, you're helping your, your donors and ignoring the community. The landfill needs to be closed. We need to come, at the county level, we need to come up with a comprehensive way to work with the towns on reducing garbage. That starts in a couple of ways. One, we need to help pass extended producer responsibility. That means putting on, on our, 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 the producers of garbage, the packagers, people who make the packaging to reduce the amount of packaging. That helps reduce the garbage. We also need to work on a regional basis on recycling. Uh, we need to work on a regional basis on uh, composting. Composting is about, we could compost about 30% of our garbage, but we don't now. Most people don't. My wife loves doing that. We have one, a composter in our backyard, and she and my younger daughter do that. Uh, but we need to have a unified way plan across the county to, to move towards zero waste. We may never completely get there, Thank but we you, need to have Mr. a plan Kamal. to get there as fast as we can. Mr. Romain. I'm just checking to see if Dave's pants are on fire because he just lied about a whole host of things. I am a plaintiff in that suit against Covanta. So let me state that right away. And we never settled that case. As far as the landfill is concerned, last time I looked, Supervisor Lesko wanted to take a Democrat, and the Democratic board wanted to take the landfill from 270 to 325 feet. I opposed that when I came in, and when I did that, I put the landfill on a plan for closure. This landfill will close in 2024 to construction debris, and shortly after that to ash. As far as ash is concerned, it is tested by the DEC and produced by Covanta and buried. The town has no role in testing ash. That's DEC. And I've called for an investigation in your newspaper today. Welcome that, because I think we should take a look to see what's being dumped there. But I'll tell you one thing I didn't do. I didn't put Thank sewage you, sludge on top of the... Thank you, landfill, like Thank supervisor you, Mr. Romaine. Let's go to our email mailbox here. And we thank you all for sending a lot of them in. This is from P. Gatt. Where do you stand on taking strident measures to safeguard and underlined improve the safety and quality of our drinking water in Suffolk County? We start out with you, Mr. Romaine. I strongly support our drinking water saving and preserving our drinking water. We have a sole source aquifer. Our water comes from under the ground. We have to protect and make sure that we don't overdevelop this county, that we make sure that the ground underneath our feet, that we preserve as much of it as possible to make sure that the water stays pure. We have to do that. It's one of the reasons that the New York State League of Conservation Voters have endorsed my candidacy over my opponent, because they know what I have done in the town of Brookhaven. 
alone in the Pine Barrens, I've added 1,100 acres in the town of Brookhaven, and I've added another 1,000 acres that the town government bought for open space. So we are for preserving land, knowing that that land is the land under our feet where the water accumulates. Also, sewers are critical to this effort. We have to move away from cesspools in densely populated areas. When I worked many years ago as a community development director for the town, and I dealt with the community of Mastic Beach, they have a high water table. And when you build on small lots, you have to put two things in there, a well and a cesspool. And if you have a high water table and a densely populated area, it's only a matter of time between before you're drinking your cesspool or your neighbors. We have to work as a county to ensure that the water quality stays pure. We have to, as a county, make sure that our sewers are tertiary, which means they recharge our aquifers, not that we pump them out to the ocean or the sound. So thank you, Mr. Romain. Thank you. Let's go to you, Mr. Cologne. Sure. So let me, let me clear up one thing. He's only a plaintiff in the lawsuit because the, the court said he couldn't get out of it. He wrote a letter that was written by the Ash Company. He signed it asking for this lawsuit to be dismissed. So, you know, this whole idea that you're sort of helping in this situation is ridiculous. Uh, look, we absolutely have a plan to protect our water, our drinking water and the water that surrounds us. We worked on it in, in the last few years in a bipartisan way. I helped draft, I helped lead the legislation and working group for it, putting this together. It was a Democratic and a Republican idea. It was environmentalists and developers working together with labor unions. This was the, a plan to get things done. We put it to the legislature, and his running mates, every single one of them, voted no, not to give the people of Suffolk County a choice about whether they wanted to support that plan. That's not leadership. I am committed to getting that plan, which is already put together on the ballot, and give us a chance to also tap into the resources so we can get sewers federal money and state money, which is available to us, but not if we don't Thank act you, quickly. Mr. Cologne. Let's take a trip out to Corum. What difference is going to make? Like, you know, let's say when, you know, if they win the election, so how do I count on them? Like, what's going to change? We start with you, Mr. Cologne. Look, I think that this is an opportunity in this election to elect someone with a different skill sets than has ever held a county executive seat. And I think that's a good thing. People in Quorum and all over are looking for new kinds of leadership, new kinds of ideas, and new kinds of energy. And quite frankly, um, people, we've had the same people in office, my opponent's been in office literally for almost 40 years. If he hasn't solved the problems that are facing us by now, he's not going to solve them in the next four years. We need to have new leadership. I am the, would be the first person ever as a prosecutor to be county executive, and I'd be the first person ever from the private sector to take a new a different look at our government and our and our budget to lead our our, our our community forward when it comes to economic development creating jobs that has been my life's work that is the kind of thing i'm going to do as county executive and i believe that people are looking for that kind of leadership and those kinds of new ideas i have done business around the country as well as here in suffolk county i've seen the way that other places do things for instance in san diego repurposing them all and creating housing in Florida, um, taking area around a community college and, and making housing out of that. I've been involved in these projects. I've also been involved, deeply involved, to contrary to what my opponent says, here in Suffolk County, chairing the Planning Commission for Suffolk County, heading up our Wastewater Infrastructure Finance Task Force, uh, heading up our Superstorm Sandy Review Task Force, uh, heading up the uh, COVID-19 small business recovery efforts for the county. I bring the best of both worlds. I have outside experience, but I have deep experience here in Suffolk County. And that's the kind of thing I think that it's different and new, and I think that's what the people of Suffolk County are going to really benefit from when I become county executive. Mr. Romain. Thank you. Um, let me start. For the first time in history, the Quorum Civic Association has endorsed my candidacy for county executive because I've worked with that civic association, and I know the problems, the problems of homelessness that is there on 25 in Quorum. I know the problems of that community, and I've worked carefully to make sure that we've addressed those problems on a town level. On a county level, I can do a lot more. The town doesn't have law enforcement powers. The county does. The town does have housing powers, and we can do a lot 
to change communities. This is why we're doing redevelopment in Port Jeff Station, why we're doing redevelopment in North Bellport, why we're doing re a redevelopment project in East Patchogue and in Mastic Beach. When you have someone that knows how government works on a local level, someone that is willing to work across party lines, you can get things done. My opponent is a partisan that attacks, and I question his ability to bring people together to get things done. Thank you, Mr. Romain. With that, we're going to go off to closing statements. And uh, Mr. Romain, you, Romain, since you won that coin toss, you've elected to go last. Yep. So Mr. Colon, we'll start with you. Sure. I am, first of all, someone who's brought people together. That's what we do in the business world. We solve problems. We don't create them. We, our job is to solve problems, whether it's creating a not-for-profit to help veterans start their own businesses, which I did and created into a national organization. Um, but I've done that here in, in Suffolk County as well, contrary to what my opponent says. When I chaired the Planning Commission, we brought together every single town and almost all the villages, Democrat and Republican, together here in Suffolk County to cut red tape when it came to, to installing renewable energy. Our efforts were recognized. We won a National Association of Counties Award for Suffolk County for that. And I went, to Suffolk, I went to Chicago to speak at the conference. I said, I'm the only person ever, I'm sure, who's gone from Long Island somewhere else to teach them how to cut red tape. But that's leadership, working across party lines to do that is exactly what I've done. I've also put together a comprehensive plan for Suffolk County, along with the legislature. We got 18 votes, all Democrats and all Republicans, to get on the same comprehensive plan. That's the leadership I'll bring to Suffolk County going forward, and I look forward to having your support on November 7th. Thank you, Mr. Colon. Mr. Romain. The leadership that I'll bring to Suffolk County is totally different. It's effective. Brookhaven Cayman Town was the only winner of a consolidation grant for $20 million from the state of New York where we brought together all jurisdictions, library districts, school districts, fire districts, where we could consolidate services and reduce expenses. If we're going to reduce expenses, we need to work with our various units of government. If you don't have the experience in government, if your major experience is how do you can save taxes for the millionaires and billionaires that you represent in your tax shelter, you're not going to get this done. Because all you're doing is pay, making people like me and you and everyone else here pay a lot more so you can save taxes for the billionaires and millionaires. But I've brought a consolidation grant together where we've saved over $20 million in taxes for the residents of Brookhaven of multiple jurisdictions, worked across party lines. Thank you, Mr. Romain. And again, thank you both, Mr. Colon, Mr. Romain, for being here with us. Uh, and you can see more and read more about the upcoming elections in Newsday at Newsday.com and on Newsday TV. And keep an eye out for Newsday's 2023 Voters Guide, which includes information on every single race. I'm Joy Brown for Newsday TV.